so based on the phase two data, the likelihood of using more cycles of doxorubicin is higher. I, what we saw is that um, patients on the, on the combination arm received more, uh, more cycles of doxorubicin and more cycles of loratumab compared to those that received doxorubicin alone and even those that crossed over to loratumab. So I think it makes everyone nervous to treat patients beyond that 450 milligram per meter squared uh, dosing uh, uh, window for doxorubicin because of the risk of cardiac uh, implications. I think uh, as long as you consider giving them prophylactic medications such as dexrazoxane up front uh, and or early on, uh, you can mitigate that risk. Uh, there was a slightly increased risk of cardiac in, uh, uh, symptoms uh, with the combination over doxorubicin, but it was not dramatic. Uh, so I think just using your judgment about how the patient's doing and being uh, ensuring close monitoring of the cardiac function uh, to assess dosing. So I think, you know, a lot, there's a lot of nuances to the treatment of sarcoma. And so there are a number of drugs for a number of indications where you might use something before your anthracycline. And a lot of the times it's, say, gemcitabine with docetaxel and myomyosarcoma, depending on the preference of the sarcoma treating institution. If you look at the phase one, two trial data, line didn't come up as line of therapy did not come up as important for response. And so when to use this should be when you're using your anthracycline. For patients who've already received one or more lines of therapy uh, and who have not yet received an anthracycline, I think consideration for the combination still is appropriate, particularly given the survival benefits seen in the phase two study. So the sequencing of this regimen in patients that have prior lines of therapy, I think uh, I would give it as early as possible. Um, in the, in the uh, subgroup analysis of this trial, there was not a whole lot of difference between patients that are treated in the first line versus those treated in later lines. That being said, um, if someone had progressed on single agent doxorubicin before and they still had room to go with regard to the, the total doxorubicin dosing, I would consider redosing them with, com with doxorubicin and olaritumab to try and achieve some benefit. Um, if they had not received doxorubicin before, I would certainly get, um, offer them uh, this combination if they were able to tolerate it. My decision on continuing or discontinuing a therapy depends in part on a number of factors, uh, namely the radiographic assessments that are performed uh, routinely while on therapy. Uh, if a patient has clear evidence of progressive disease, meaning significant growth in existing lesions or new lesions showing up on imaging, uh, for me, that's uh, the indicator to consider a, a change in therapy. Uh, for a patient who, is, uh, uh, who may have slight progression uh, in disease, slight worsening of disease radiographically, but is having clinical improvement in symptoms, uh, that may be a situation in which I continue uh, with a particular therapy. Uh, in part because the total number of therapies that we have for soft tissue sarcoma remains somewhat limited. Uh, and so I think uh, giving up on a therapy too soon uh, has potential uh, uh, problems uh, with that. Uh, with respect to the combination of doxorubicin and olaritumab, the study was designed uh, for the combination of, of the two drugs to continue for approximately eight cycles. And then the study allowed for the continuation of olaritumab as a maintenance therapy uh, until progression.